So a few months ago, I decided I wanted to get some of my animals outside full time for the summer. Obviously, if you live down in Florida and some of the warmer areas, you can do this year round, no problem. But up here in upstate New York, we get some pretty cold winters, so I really can't keep the animals outdoors. But for the summers, I really wanted to build something that was sturdy that I could leave them out overnight in. And so, well, you already know what I built because you clicked on the video, you already read the title. But I built an outdoor iguana enclosure to get my two iguanas, Levi my green iguana and Roxy my Cuban rock iguana outside for the summer. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how I went from just having a plain old backyard into this. So we've gotten a lot of new subscribers lately, so I just want to say hello everyone. My name is Adam. I own Uncharted Wild. This is an animal education business I started about five years ago. But today, I want to show you guys what I did. And there he is right there. I want to show you guys what I did to get my green iguana Levi and my rock iguana Roxy outside to enjoy some natural sun. Now, I started this project back in the beginning of... July end of June something like that and it took me a while to get it fit finished because there's a lot that goes into this kind of thing especially to make it weatherproof for the winter and I'm going to talk a bit about that and it's just we had some kind of hang-ups with the fencing and things like that so I didn't get it done until last week which is September so obviously it's starting to get cold out and it's coming pretty quick today is the last day in the 70s for probably a week then it's going to be in the 60s and 50s so I really had to film this video today so unfortunately because of my timing and getting this whole thing done I didn't have a whole lot of time to actually put the iguanas out in it but we built this thing to last for the winter so next summer um, as soon as it starts getting warm out I'm going to be able to put these guys out here so what I did first is I basically dug a giant kind of trench square into the ground about 10 inches foot down and then we started on the bottom so what we used for our foundation is we had these posts right here and these were four by four inches right here and those are on every corner and also at the kind of middle wall right there and then at the bottom these are all this is all pressure treated wood by the way you need to use pressure treated because that will hold up to the elements the best so what we did was these are two inches by ten inches so we dug we drilled three of those onto our post and we connected it so we basically had kind of like a giant box and then on top of that what we did is we started putting two by fours up here along the top and this was going to be kind of our roof panel so this one right here this one I'm touching right now that is the actual top to this and up there that's the lid we're gonna talk about the lid a little bit oh, and there's Levi trying to make a break for it right now or something so once we had the three boards connected to the bottom of the post we filled the dirt in because I this took the dirt digging took a lot of time honestly and before I go any further when you're digging this the first thing you want to do when you're building outside is make sure everything is level it just makes it easier so we made sure that the trench was level we made sure that each subsequent board we put on was level and you also have to try and make sure that this post is level right here so that it's level both this way and this way there's kind of like two dimensions you need to worry about so that it goes straight up and you would think that having a board the same distance would kind of make it squarish but that's not always the case so we had the three boards on the bottom two the one board on top the two by four up here next step was to take more two by four and make central beams I guess you could say support beams both helping the top keeping this 2x4 up here from bowing because a 2x4 will bow pretty easily and then also you can see I have one right there and I have one on the far wall over there and then also it gives us something to keep this wire to so this fencing is inch by inch PVC coated chicken wire you want to use PVC coated wire you don't want to use normal chicken wire because that metal though an iguana will most likely rub its face raw nose rubbing on it so this way it doesn't hurt them if they rub against it, it doesn't hurt them if they climb it or anything like that and it also prevents the metal from getting all rusted and everything like that and so far I mean I've had it on here for about a couple weeks now and it's held up pretty well we'll see what happens over the winter the uh, Amazon reviews were kind of mixed but there aren't a whole lot of options as far as PVC coated wire goes I got this from uh, I think it was fencer wire and they actually sent me the wrong size so it took about a week to get here they sent me the wrong size so then I had to send it back and wait for the proper size they actually they sent me two foot tall instead of the five foot tall like I needed so the two foot tall would have been somewhere like here so it would not have worked out so this is this whole I got two rolls of chicken wire it was five foot tall by 50 feet long so basically one roll got me the entire side and we used another roll for the top 
So to keep the fencing on, I used two different means. The first one you can see right here, because I didn't I didn't put the board down yet. But we stapled it, and these are half inch staples, and we stapled it to the two by four. And then on top of that, we took these four inch by one inch boards, and you can see that's another reason why we have those central kind of two by fours right here is so we can anchor this on top of it and keep the fencing from bowing too much as well. But we put this on right here, we drilled it in right here, and then this sandwiches down the wire. So that wire is going absolutely nowhere. So we do this along the sides. We did it, obviously not right here, but we did it along the top right here. And then I did it along the bottom. And the whole goal is to A, keep the iguana secure, but B, up here where I live, we don't get a whole lot of predators not like big, big ones anyways, but I do get the occasional fox, you get raccoons, you might see the occasional coyote, but so I just wanted to make sure leaving these animals outside, there was no way for a predator to get in at all. So this thing is 100% predator proof. Like I said, that goes about 10 inches into the ground. So the predator is gonna have a real hard time trying to dig underneath that. They won't be able to do it easily. So I'll be able to catch it if someone's trying and they won't be able to get through this fencing because we have it wedged on basically every single side. So this fencing is going nowhere. So with that done, we basically had all of our sides done. The last part, at least for the external of the cage, was I had to worry about was the top. Now for the top, because this whole thing is staying outdoors through our winter and we can get anywhere from like two to six foot of snow in a winter, is I just wanted to make sure that this was all going to be snow proof. And this top, obviously if I left this on year round, that was just gonna accumulate snow over the winter and it would probably just break through. So I wanted to make sure so you see that's the top two by four right there I was talking about. I have, I have to put another four by one right there, but I left it off for the video. So this is right here is the two by four that we used for the top. What we did was we built a separate two by four frame to sit on top of this. And that way I can pop this off. We're gonna take both top panels off and we're gonna store them right here. We'll wrap them up in a tent or a tarp or something. And we'll just store them off to the side for the winter. And then in the spring, I'll take them back, put them back up and then we'll screw them. They're mounted on the inside, I'll show you. So with this top panel, I didn't do anything really fancy. I didn't put any of these four by ones or anything. Basically, we just built the frame, built a middle support, built angle supports for the corners. And then we just stapled the fencing to the actual kind of pan the wood itself. And with that, we used a lot more staples than we did for any of these side panels because obviously the four by one's not kind of sandwiching it down. And up here, I mean, I'm not super worried. The iguanas aren't gonna be strong enough to push all those half inch staples up. And also foxes and other things aren't gonna be able to get up and try to get through that. So I'm not really worried about it. We didn't make it as super heavy duty as we did for all these other panels, all these other fencing where we used all these four by ones to sandwich it in. Hi, Levi. And then with the top and the walls all done, the last thing we really had to do was put the doors on. So what we did for the doors, this is just a two by four frame. And then we have a middle support one right here that we just cut at an angle to mount it into the corners. And this is just what I put the door handle on. So we stapled the fencing to the inside of this. So it's mounted on the inside. So they'd have to push this way to try and get out. But again, they don't really do that. Hi. At least they don't do it on the door. I didn't give them any way to really access the fencing on the door unless they wanted to climb it. And then what we did is we just kind of did it. So we left a gap on the top and we left a gap on this side so that it was able to be moved. Now this gap, it is somewhat big. I might take a, another four by one and put it right there a little bit just to alleviate that. But the iguana is not getting into it or not, iguana is not getting out of it. Fox isn't getting into it. I'm not super concerned about it. And again, this is kind of end of the season. All this stuff. Oh, Roxy just left me a real big poop right there. All these kind of little nit bit things I'm going to probably work on more next year. So with this done, then what we did for the hardware itself to keep it locked was I have two different locks and these are just external gate locks. So you just got this one that just does that. And then you got another one that goes right here and I can put a padlock right there. I mean, and this isn't really going to stop someone that really was dead set on coming into my property to steal my iguanas. Cause I mean, they just use some wire cutters, I guess would be enough. They won't really, the padlock would not stop them if they were that dead set on stealing my iguanas. But I don't think anyone's going to do that. So I'm not really worried about a padlock on it right now. And so why don't we go inside and I'll show you the inside of the enclosure.
So like I said, stapled this to the door. The guana's not getting out of that. And this is what I meant by, uh, so this top panel, it just sits right on top of the two by four. So this two by four is part of the cage that's staying outside. And this is the two by four top panel that we're popping off for the winter. If you ever want to build an outdoor enclosure for kind of living up north or where you get snow, that would be my top recommendation. Because if you pop the top off, then that is most of your snow problem out the window. You don't have to worry about it. I will have to worry about snow kind of building up on these platforms that I built, but this top will come off and the snow will just come right in and just sit on the ground and go away. It won't be destroying the cage. At least the weight of it won't be breaking this fencing. And Roxy's over there in the corner. That, she's kind of made this her little hidey home for right now. So a couple of things you're going to notice right now, there is no water bowl outside for them because because of the temperature, I haven't been able to put them outside for more than probably three or four hours during the afternoon for the last week. So I'm, I mean, they get their water as soon as they go back in. So please don't yell at me. And then also there is no hide box for them right now. Next summer, when I actually put these guys out here full time, I'm going to be building an insulated heated hide box. I'm going to put hers in this corner right here and Levi's right over there. So I am going to do that next year. But again, these guys aren't overnight right now, just because it's getting into the forties and fifties at night. And that's too cold for me to leave iguanas outside personally. So this is Roxy's home, and as you can see, big old poop, and there's another poop. Basically, she's been pooping everywhere. That's how she kind of makes herself at home. And so we've got a couple different logs here. So she, uh, she can, I've seen her on this log, and I have seen her about halfway up on this log. I haven't, I've set her on this one, but I haven't seen her climb up to this shelf yet. She's got a log right there to do so. I have seen her at the bottom of this log though. And then I have seen her climb up onto this one. And then next year, I didn't get to it this year, but next year I want to build a ramp with some of this fencing on it to act kind of like to give her something to grip onto. And I'm going to start it right there. And that's going to go right up across under this and it's going to go to this one. So she will be able to access this. And if she really wanted to, she can climb the fencing. I have seen her do that, but you can see this is where I stored all the dirt. Ooh, I almost just fell over. <laughs> So this is where I stored all the dirt when I dug up the the trench for the enclosure and that's why Levi has all the grass. So this was all dirt and I kind of cleared it back off and some of the grass and moss is starting to grow back through and she's been eating a good bit of it. And there's some rocks in here and stuff like this. This is very much a more rock iguana-y looking enclosure whereas Levi's still got that full grass and I'm sure that'll kind of get trimmed down. It's kind of been just left to grow in wild. But yeah, so this is Roxy's enclosure. I am very, very happy with it. She is really liking that natural sun. Oh, there's Levi. We're coming to you next, buddy. And you can see she's right over here in the corner. Why don't we come down and say, hi, Roxy. Hi. She's a little jumpy since I put her out here into it. She's still kind of getting used to it. Uh, don't bob your head at me. It's okay. Levi has always been the one more comfortable with being outside. She's just a gorgeous looking iguana, aren't you? Yes. Let me know in the comments how you guys think this looks. Obviously, like I said, I am going to be putting a hide in there and a water bowl and the ramp right there. But if you guys have any other ideas or any other recommendations, if any of you guys keep iguanas outdoors, feel free to let me know in the comments. Why don't we go over next door and we take a look at Levi's. So, get that one, get that one. Oh, you're down here. Hello. I'm gonna try not to step on you. Hello, dude. Let me close that. So this door obviously pushes inward. It does not go outward. And then put that right there. So this is Levi's enclosure. Again, he's got two shelves. His are a bit higher up than Roxy's, if you notice, because the green iguanas do like that added verticality. And then he's got logs just like Roxy does, and his are a little bit slimmer and longer. Now, if you remember, I've talked about, I think it was either in the green iguana spotlight or in the room tour, I talked about how Levi here is 
a dwarf. He's not really going to be full grown because he came to me when he was a pound and a half. So right now he's about five and a half pounds. So a green iguana normally should be much, much bigger than this. He is already over 10 years old. So he should be much bigger than this right now. But his previous owner did a very bad job of taking care of him and feeding him properly. He's got the same anchors keeping the enclosure top locked on. Now when we built this wall right here, we messed up a little bit and we messed up with the squareness of it a little bit. So this whole thing, if you kind of look right there, also the two by four we used for the top bowed a bit. So this is out by about half an inch. Again, it's not a big enough gap for the iguana to get out. I'm not worried about it. But as you can see right here, the whole thing kind of sits askew because this wall we messed up on. When you're doing this, don't lose sight of the fact of keeping the entire thing square all the time because it really makes the difference. Oh, you got a little, you got a little spider web schmutz on your, there we go. All right. So Levi, I think, really seems to be enjoying it. They're still kind of getting used to it because, again, they've only really lived in those indoor enclosures that I had that I showed you a couple weeks ago in the reptile room tour. I have taken them outside, obviously, tons of time, but that's always been on a leash, like you've probably also seen in previous videos, because I'm either going to programs or sometimes I just walk them around in the yard. So I am very, very happy to finally be able to give these guys an enclosure where I can put them outside, get them natural sunlight, just let them soak in all those natural UV rays for the summer. And again, I didn't finish it on time for this summer, but next year we're gonna hit the ground running and both of our iguanas, you can see one right there and one right there, both of our iguanas will be outside from the get-go. I'm really happy that this project is finally done and next summer I'm going to be doing even more outdoor enclosures. We have a new animal coming that I hinted at in the reptile room tour video. He's going to be going outside so he's going to be getting an enclosure next year and then I'm also planning on building an outdoor enclosure for Norman the black and white tegu. Ugh, are you serious? <laughs> But I'm planning on building an outdoor enclosure for Norman, the black and white tegu. That'll be a little bit different. I think I'm going to build that one not for a vertical cage, but I'll probably make it like a top opener. I'm not really worried about that one just yet. That'll be for next year. Levi's on the move. <laughs> but yeah, so next year we're going to be building two more, at least to my knowledge, two more big outdoor reptile enclosures. And then I've also got another outdoor enclosure planned for something that isn't quite reptile related but we'll talk about that next year so if you like the enclosure that i built make sure you like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future builds like i said i have a whole lot of stuff planned to build next year so we were supposed to do it this year but it didn't really pan out so next year we're going to hit the ground running i want to get as many of my animals kind of the bigger ones outside that'll enjoy the sun as i can so make sure you stay tuned for that thanks for tuning in and i'll catch you later